Morning. Another day, another real world test. Today, we're gonna be testing a product from Razer that was announced as a concept about a year ago. Now, usually I feel like these are just smart little PR moves that Razer likes to do um, to get themselves written about at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas every year. You see, they generally just make some slightly over the top product, um, call it a concept, say maybe they'll make it, and then they just generally never do. The three screened laptop called Project Valerie of 2017. The laptop shell that you put your Razer phone into to turn it into a computer in 2018 called Project Linda, rip the Razer phone, etc. But last year they showed us a modular PC based on Intel's NUC system, which we'll talk about in a bit, um, that they called Tomahawk. But this felt a little different. And actually some cases at this point have already come out with the Tomahawk branding on them, but the NUC PC never did. Well, last week, Razer emailed me and told me they're actually gonna put the NUC into production and that they had a pre-production unit that I could check out that is now at the studio. So, let's go see what's what. But first things first. Coffee. Check. Okay, now real quick, let's talk about what this little black box actually is. So it's about the same size as the Razer Core X, which is their eGPU housing that allows you to put a desktop grade GPU inside it and then use Thunderbolt 3, if your computer supports it in eGPUs, to connect to it and use the GPU as if it was actually inside your computer. Now that gives you just a ton more power for gaming, video editing, and anything else that requires a lot of graphics power. But while the core requires you to plug a computer into it, this has the computer already inside, and that computer is called a NUC, or Next Unit of Computing. I don't know. Regardless, it is basically Intel's own mini computer range that comes in ultra small pre-built chassis. Now, the lineup has been around for a while, but mostly it was bare bones computers that felt like they were meant for the office or a commercial setting with lower end GPUs inside and maybe meant as kind of a competitor to the Mac mini that has found its way into similar business settings over the years. Fast forward to now though, and Intel and now Razer have released NUC housings that utilize a NUC compute element and allow you to add a desktop GPU into the mix, which to me makes the entire series a bit more appealing to gamers and content creators. So inside the Tomahawk, we have a NUC 9 Extreme Compute Element, which houses a 9th gen i9-9980HK CPU, and it plugs into a PCIe slot just like a GPU would, for example. Now, technically, that's a laptop CPU, but that's to keep heat production down for such a small case, I assume, and is also technically an older generation of their CPUs. Intel is actually selling 10th gen ones right now, but not in the NUC format. So the rumor is that COVID caused some supply issues potentially, and Intel will eventually just jump to releasing the 11th gen NUC units at some point when that is solved. Now the NUC itself, you can actually take out after disconnecting a few cables, and then you undo two screws at the top to open it, and you'll get access to two slots for RAM, which in this case comes pre-filled with two 8 gig 2,666 megahertz sticks, and access to two M.2 SSD slots, with one being pre-filled with a 512 gig SSD in this case. Both the SSDs can be upgraded and so can the RAM. It's just the CPU that you can't change. Now, in order to do that, you would have to buy a new NUC unit entirely. So like say an 11th gen i9 version comes out and you wanna to upgrade to that. You would buy that. And then you could of course swap the RAM and the SSD from this old one into that new one as expected. Now, as far as ports are concerned, they're a part of the NUC itself, but we have a ton of them actually, especially for the size of this computer. We have four Type-A USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 ports, two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, two ethernet ports, a 3.5 millimeter line out, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Okay, so now let's put everything back together and then let's see what it can do. Okay, so besides the NUC, there's another hard drive slot that comes preloaded with a two terabyte 5400 RPM drive, which looks like Seagate is the manufacturer actually. Which reminds me, I have to give Seagate a shout out because I was actually complaining recently about how Google is getting rid of Google Drive Unlimited Storage and I've actually filled up with footage like 40 terabytes well over. And so I was trying to figure out, well, what am I gonna do with all of that footage? And someone from Seagate sent me a bunch of their Iron Wolf 16 gig drives, which is amazing. 
because I'm gonna put that in my NAS and then I'll use a program to pull everything down from Google Drive. Let me know though, if you guys want me to do a tutorial on how that works, if anyone would be interested in that, I'll try to see if I can do that as well. Okay, so besides the NUC and that hard drive, we have another PCIe slot, which is where things get a little more interesting. Now, you can buy this computer from Razer without a GPU and put in your own into this slot, or you can buy a version with an NVIDIA RTX 3080 GPU included for $800 more which is technically a $100 markup over the $700 cost of the GPU by itself if you were to buy that on your own. Now, if you go for it without the GPU though, you can choose any GPU you want basically, so long as it fits within the 320 by 140 millimeter dimensions. But there is one GPU that I think a lot of people are curious about that is absent from this list, and it happens to be the one that I recently bought, the RTX 3090. Now. This GPU is massive. And when I asked Razer, they basically just told me it wouldn't fit and there was no way. But that's also what they told me about the Razer Core X and the 3090 as well. And I, I mean, I got it to fit just fine. So I had to try it. All right, technically it does fit, but as you slide it in, the cable connector placement at the top causes the cables to hit one of the two fans on the top of the case and it stops you from sliding it in any further. That is, unless you bend those cables slightly aggressively and then wedge it in. And it works. And here are some benchmarks that I ran just to confirm. But the thing at one point is that I could definitely hear the fan just slightly hitting that cable. I moved it and I got it to stop, but that is a bit concerning obviously. So it fits but it's a little risky. And since Razer doesn't recommend it, it's not technically a GPU that they'll support. And honestly, if you're not a content creator using insane footage or a video game developer, there's not a lot of reason for you to buy the 3090 over the half as expensive 3080. Since people have shown that at least for gaming, it's only like 10 to 15% more powerful, if that. So I wouldn't recommend it anyway. But you know, I had to see if it worked. Okay, so I put the 3080 back in there because that's what's recommended, but let's see what it can do. And let's start with gaming. Now, some of you might remember the game Crisis from back in the day, which on its highest settings would kill even the most powerful computers it, to the point where it actually became like a comment that everybody would just leave on every video ever about any type of gaming PC. Okay, but can it run Crisis? And it kind of became a joke. Now though, there's a new game that on its highest settings challenges even some of the latest GPUs on the market. So let's try that. That's right, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Honestly, on its highest settings, it has some serious like lighting calculations to do. It has like ultra realistic satellite imagery. PCGamer.com even said that it, quote, might be one of the most ambitious video games, both visually and technologically in recent history, end quote. Also, my buddy, Michael Fisher, Mr. Mobile, one of the other YouTubers that I share this new studio space with is obsessed with the game um, because he's obsessed with planes. But he let me borrow his Thrustmaster like controller setup so that I could test this properly. So let's try that. So first up, let's set it to Ultra and we'll see how that does. Okay, and um, I don't know, let's just pick a random place to go. Sure, Sydney, why not? And we'll let that load for a sec. Okay, so first up, um, this game's minimum requirements for RAM are 32 gigs, and I only have 16, so keep that in mind. Um, also, performance-wise, the taking off is going to be the hardest thing for this computer, and that's because all of the things that need to be rendered on the ground are obviously harder to render when you can see them and you're closer to them. As we take off and as we get higher, it'll just get easier and easier. So, we're just going to try to take off. Let's see how that goes. Also, fair warning, I've played this game once. Oh, 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 okay. Joystick button 14 to remove the parking brake. Uh, wait, I think it did. I did nothing, I'm still there. <laughs> oh, here, basic controls. Ha, 
14. It's this one. That's it, I think. I think it did it. Cool. Oh, I'm moving. That's a good thing. Oh, I'm in the air! Airborne! Yeah. So now browse that away. Bye. Okay, so as you can see from the little uh, frame rate counter that I have in the corner here, doing pretty well during takeoff. And now even just flying as low as I can um, just to tax the system a little bit, it never drops below 30 frames a second, which is actually pretty impressive. Okay, and here are some benchmarks for anyone who's interested in those. Okay, now I wanna test the video editing out on this thing. I've opened a video project that I've done before, um, and we're just gonna kind of scrub through that a little bit and see how that does. Now I'm gonna go straight to the part that always gives every computer a little bit of a hard time for some reason, which is, uh, I mean, all of this footage is my Sony a7S III. It's on its highest eye quality, which is, you know, 10-bit color and all that other fun stuff. It chokes some machines for sure, but for some reason, once I put text over it, and then when I put two videos side by side with text um, in this little section here, that's when things start to slow down. So we're at full resolution, push play, and see how it does. So far, so good. Uh, and then here's where it kills most computers. It's uh, two iPhone videos, uh, 4K videos playing at 30 frames a second, side by side, and that, that's, uh, that's causing it to choke. Okay, so that's a full resolution though. Okay, now let me drop it down to quarter resolution. Okay, and that plays back just fine. Okay, and now let's head home because it's late um, and see if I can maybe sum up my thoughts on this thing. Okay, calling it a night. Okay, now, honestly, I, I kind of like the concept of this. Now, I know, like, obviously, if you're a hardcore gamer, if you're somebody who, like, knows how to build a computer, you know, yes, technically speaking, if we add up all the costs and stuff, you could probably build a decent computer for the same amount of money, whatever. But the truth is that there's a lot of people out there that, you know, want the modularity and they want the upgradability of a desktop, but they don't want to deal with, like, the heat sink thermal paste and and just don't want to have to fiddle with like a, finding a case and doing that. like it's it's kind of a cool idea to where you could just kind of have that NUC, have it with the processor already built in still be able to upgrade your ram storage have all the ports you could ever want and also in a much smaller form factor than most cases and motherboards come you know with like mini itx etc this is even smaller than that so kind of interesting at least right what do you guys think let me know in the comments below um, what you thought of this computer, of this concept, like the NUC concept as well. Um, and also what you guys thought of the video and the format. Always appreciate uh, hearing from you guys on that. Otherwise though, regardless, thanks for watching.